Okay, so uh, maybe I'm one of the only people on YouTube who really desperately wants to see 32-bit float audio recorded in camera. And, um, and I've been harping that maybe the DJI Osmo Action 4 or Pocket 3 will be the first camera to do so. But the more I think about it, the more I think that might not be the case. And I think that actually the camera company that will be the first to implement 32-bit float audio in their cameras is Zoom. And, uh, and here are all the reasons why I think that's going to be happening in 2024. Now, disclaimer, I this isn't sponsored by Zoom. I haven't had any conversations with anyone from Zoom in, in a number of months. This is purely my speculation with regards to where I think the state of cameras and 32-bit float audio will go in 2024. And this video might be a little lengthy, so I'll break it up into different chapters based on topic of interest down in the description. So there'll be timestamps, so you can skip to whatever part you want to. So first of all, let's talk about why I think 32-bit float audio being recorded in camera is such a big deal and why I think solo content creators need it. Um, aside from the argument that professional audio engineers have been recording audio in 24-bit depth forever, and you won't hear a difference between 24-bit and 32-bit float, um, we'll leave that aside. So imagine a world where you take your camera and you go out with your camera and mic and you shoot a whole bunch of footage for the day and, um, and you get back to your studio and you dump your dump your uh, files onto your computer to start editing. And in the middle of your edit, you realize that your audio is clipped and you have no kind of recourse to, to fix it. That's where a camera that records a backup 32-bit float WAV file comes into play. Because in an ideal world, that camera will generate not just an mp3 4 or not just an mp4 file for your video with baked in audio but it will also write a separate 32-bit float wave file as a backup and what that would enable you to do is to take your mp4 take your 32-bit float wave file line them up in your nle and um and have them be perfectly in sync and you can just clip out that part of the wave file where your video is clip where your audio is clipping and use that to replace the baked in audio that was recorded in your mp4 file in my mind that's how it would work it would be a backup method to ensure that you always have a clean audio recording no matter the audio recording situation with a couple caveats depending on the spl of your microphone and other people will argue that you can do that and you can already do that in a bunch of different ways, including implementing things like limiters or compression built in your camera. But those, I think in my opinion, those options manipulate your audio file to the point where they bake in effects that you cannot undo, as opposed to 32-bit float audio, which is raw and all of the information that will allow you to... Um, that it will allow you to fix it in a non-destructive way. Safety tracks probably are the closest thing to being the same, but you can't record, to my knowledge, stereo tracks, stereo signals in safety tracks because a, a safety track would be taking a stereo recording and recording one channel louder than the other. So if you wanted to do a stereo recording, it, it I don't think safety tracks work with stereo recordings. So that's the reason why I would want my camera to record in 32-bit float. It's not that it sounds better. It's not that the audio quality will be better. It is purely so that when I am out shooting, I don't have to worry about setting audio levels or missetting audio levels because I'm the only person doing all this production myself. And I know that I'll have an audio file as a backup that I can drop into an editor and manipulate as I see fit to recover any audio that might be um, lost due to clipping. So 
in order to have this happen, we have to go back to Zoom and um, a couple years ago, I think in it was April of 2021, where they released this product. The Zoom Q8N 4K. And this is a this is Zoom's camera. Zoom has I think currently two video recorders this one and uh, a smaller a smaller different form factor version of this and basically what this is is a video camera and audio recorder mixed into one and um for i think for 32-bit float to be implemented in camera in 2024 it will only be with companies that have that currently put out both technologies and to my knowledge, there are only two companies, that's DJI, with their, obviously their cameras, but also their um, Mic 2, which has 32-bit float internal recording. And the other company, which is much more likely, is Zoom. Zoom is known recently for their 32-bit float um, recorders. They have a number of different options going all the way back as far, I think, as maybe the uh, Zoom F2 is the first one. And I have an F3. I also have a Zoom M3. They have the M2 and M4 mic track series. I have a Zoom UAC232, a 32-bit float audio interface. And when this camera was released, and I don't think... I bought it at release two years ago or about a year and a half ago. And I don't think I've ever talked about it on this channel. And that's because um, while I was super excited about this because it is a multi-track video audio recorder you can record stereo tracks with the built-in xy mic but it also has two xlr inputs on the side that do provide phantom power um it was it's not the product that i wanted it to be part of that is that the camera has limited functionality and the image quality is is okay i would say that the image quality of this camera is on par with an action camera from maybe like four or five years ago. Whereas their audio capabilities, even though it only records in 24-bit, um, I think either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz max, it sounds great, right? It, I mean, Zoom makes great audio recorders, and this device is is no different. Um, the XY microphone that's built into this is a little, I think, on the weak side compared to the XY microphone that comes on something like the Zoom H6. But uh, for what this is, it, it does the job. And when you use this device, it, uh, it records an MP4 video file with baked-in audio from whatever source you enable. And you can record separate tracks, separate WAV files for this XY, which has its own built-in gain, as well as input one and input two. Um, and then you can mix them in the camera to record to the MP4 file. So at the end of your, at the end of your shoot, you have not just a WAV, a stereo WAV file for this, but you also have a WAV file if you use input one and two two separate files, and you have an MP4 that has baked in audio with whatever inputs you mix to be recorded in that file. And the most important part for me is that they are all synced. So you can drop your MP4 into your timeline and you can drop your WAV files, line up the beginning of those files, and they are all synced going through the end. Um, GoPro does this GoPro did this, right? They they have backup raw recordings of their audio in addition to their video recordings, but I I hated using them because in GoPro's case, the audio and video weren't synced up. And so you had to it was like the the audio was always behind by three or four or five frames to start, and so you had to manually or you know, using software sync that up before you started editing. This guy will does that automatically. 
because those files are are all the same. And so this is why I think Zoom is going to be the company that releases the first camera with 32-bit float internal recording because they already have a camera that almost does that, which is what I'm holding in my hand. All they have to do is to take their already existing 32-bit float technology and circuitry and input it into this device and and basically that's it, right? You'll be able to um, have a 32-bit float recorder inside of a video camera. And I think that has to be the way they go because of all of the products that they've been releasing in 2023 with um, the, the R4 multi-track 32-bit float recorder, the um, M3 series, the, um, you know, their F3, I think that the next iteration of their video camera will have 32-bit float capabilities. And I think it's the first time we're going to have that, and I think it's going to be a game changer. It is going to effectively change the way that creators view recording audio alongside their videos. The one thing that could hold Zoom back is the functionality of the camera. If the video quality isn't up to snuff, I mean, this shoots in 4K, but it is, um, yeah, there's something about the way that the video is implemented in this that doesn't, I mean, it has, it looks like an action camera. There's limited manipulation with regards to its um, settings manually. Uh, like you can't, I don't think you can, you can't set a white balance. There's only auto white balance based on a number of different presets. Um, and so things like that are hold are what holds this back with regards to being the perfect camera for recording high quality audio. And so that's why, that's why I so desperately want DJI to, to, to implement 32-bit float audio, right? Because I think that their cameras are superior in image quality. Um, and while I think that they are moving towards a revolutionized way of recording USB audio with their devices, Zoom is known for their 32-bit float capabilities and recorders. And so if DJI and Zoom had a baby, yeah, that could be the ultimate camera. But in the meantime, um, if we're looking at a 32-bit float recording option, just a total package, it would be the next iteration of this Q8N 4K. But that's not to say that that's the only way to get 32-bit float audio. If we had something like, um, if a camera like DJI's Action 4 or Pocket 3 enabled a backup reco audio recording of a WAV file in 32-bit float, and we had a we had a device, a 32-bit float recording device that also outputted via USB-C 32-bit float, that would be a way that you could connect a microphone, record 32-bit float, and output that into the camera all at the same time. And I know that this could be a possibility because this is the Zoom F2. And while the Zoom F2 uh, is a little bit older and doesn't have this kind of capabilities. I think it is well within Zoom's ability to create a product that is the size of a Zoom F2, small enough to um, connect into a, a cold shoe of a camera mount. Plug Then you could plug in your vid any video mic you want, any 3.5 millimeter TRS microphone into this device, which would provide the plug and power it needs, it would be able to record that microphone internally in 32-bit float, but also via USB-C output, output to a camera via USB-C digitally as a 32-bit float output. And I know that that's a possibility because the Zoom M3 mic track, which I'm recording on right now with my Action 4, 
outputs an audio source via USB-C. And so the idea that that USB-C output could be in a 32-bit float format and that the camera, given the fact that it is writing in 32-bit float, could receive that information, that would be like another ideal way that we could implement 32-bit float recordings in camera. Uh, I think we are so close to, to having this. It's something that I know that I want and a number of others out there feel similarly. And I know that it is, with the, with the prevalence of 32-bit float now in the, the DJI Mic 2, in the creator combo of the Pocket 3, with uh, the Rode Wireless Pro having 32-bit float backup recording capabilities, um, with Deity teasing that they are going to release a 32-bit float pocket recorder in the PR2, which I am excited about, but seems like it's, yeah, a fantasy. And with whatever 32-bit float recorders Zoom has up their sleeve, uh, yeah, moving forward, if you don't know the benefits of 32-bit float audio recording for your content creation, in 2024, you will. And it will effectively revolutionize how we, the process in which we create content as solo content creators. So, but I want to know your thoughts. Do you have certain thoughts on how 32-bit float could be implemented in camera and in 2024? Because if you do, let me know down in the comments below. Um, thanks so much for humoring me and thanks for watching. And we'll talk again real soon.